Hey. Hey. <laughs> How are you doing? Good. <laughs> Good. Let's do, our, let's do our intro. Yeah. 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 Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, we are Barb and Cynthia from uh, your local online yarn shop, River City Yarns. Uh, our bricks and mortar store is located in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. But we are online everywhere, Barb, don't you think? That's right. I like that you say our new online local yarn shop because yeah. that's our new mantra, isn't it? We, I, you know, we have met so many people from mm -hmm. mostly from North America, but we've met people in Australia, South Korea, Germany, the I Netherlands. A, I sent a package to Hong Kong. Did you? Yeah. Yes? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's been really fun. Yeah. In a way, expanding our reach, right? Right. Yeah. Well, I think what I hear from what I hear from you folks is that the podcast is kind of what makes it local. Yeah. That coming inside our yarn shop makes you feel like you're part of our community, mm. which is exactly why we're doing this. Yes, right? that's right. Yeah. So today we are, we're shooting from the main floor of our store mm -hmm. and it's a beautiful day out in Edmonton today. We've got the sun shining. Oh, yeah. It's a little crisp and cool. It is sweater weather, mm -hmm. right? Maybe we should start off by talking about what we're wearing. Sure. Because I see you're wearing a beautiful soundtrack Ta -da! sweater. <laughs> I got finished, you guys. This was uh, my holiday knitting and it just, it went really quick. Mm -hmm. So this is I, the soundtrack sweater by Marie Green. Mm -hmm. It was part of the four day knit along. And a year this, ago. Yes. And mm -hmm. this is your second version of it, right? Yeah. 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 So tell us I like about the, I'm what you a, did. the kind of person that I like to knit a pattern over like two or three times or more if I really like it. And I really like this one. So it was I fun. Thought, I thought you told me you frogged the first one. I, well, no, I frogged Marie's sweater this year. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I got confused. You, you still have it on the needles, right? I do. I Marie's do. Marie's <laughs> sweater this year was called? Fireworks. Fireworks, mm -hmm. yes. yes. And I have to, you know, I just, I confess. I, it wasn't for me, and I said right from the beginning, you know what, I got this much done, the cowl, and then I just thought, no, it's not going to work, and so I admitted it, and then I cast on this one. Yeah, yeah. So this one was all done in, like, stash. It's, there's three skeins of Temptation, Adam and Eve, Ooh, in here that I had at home, and that's kind of how the, the dark uh, parts of it appear uh, but it was just stash I just randomly went and gathered all my reds wow. and held two fingering weight together mm -hmm. and it was so much fun because I got a chance to do the sweater again and marl at the same time which is just a technique that I've been having a lot of fun with lately. yes so yeah tell us what is marling just holding two colors together and letting them blend yeah and so you can create all kinds of color combinations yeah. that way. Yeah. Check out Cecilia Campanchero's book. I'm so impressed you can pronounce Cecilia's last name. Mm -hmm. Wow. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. But I can't pronounce Olga's. Can you? You've got hers I, down pat. I, I will pronounce Olga's last name. I've been practicing mm -hmm. and practicing it because she's been doing classes for us. Yes. Yes. But before we move on to that, mm -hmm. um, so... People will also ask, like, how do you get gauge when you're holding strands of yarn together? Like, yeah. what, how do you manage that, Barb? Uh, you know, I just did a little swatch and got gauge. It wasn't okay. hard at all. I think two fingerings kind of equate to a DK anyway. Yeah. So, But do, can you maintain gauge that way? Like, were you using different kinds of fingering weight yarns? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how It do didn't you... really matter. I even put mohair in. <laughs> of and those sections did. are those <laughs> sections are a little chunkier. Okay. Uh, but it really didn't matter. And you know, some are thicker than others, and some are thinner. When I feel the fabric, mm -hmm. um, but I don't mind that. I just wanted a you know a big pullover that I could just pop on yeah, over yeah. top of something else. Well, and the color really suits you. Uh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> it's my Christmas sweater. <laughs> The fun part was knitting it on the plane. I think we, I must have got, you know, about that much of the body done right. on the plane. It was just 
Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. That was great. Yeah, so you went on a holiday to uh, Atlantic I, yes, Canada. Yes, Atlantic Canada. Yeah. Well, at we, least Nova Scotia. Yes. <laughs> we had booked it months and months ago, and there was this little break in COVID when it was a little bit, you know, under control here. And so we took the opportunity to uh, get our vaccination cards and, um, and, and go. And it was really nice because we stayed in uh, a little town and we had a house all to ourselves. Mm -hmm. So we didn't have to, you know... Um, mingle? Yeah, mingle a lot <laughs> with other people. And it was great. I took the opportunity to visit the girls at Han Maiden, yes. fleece artist. And we also went to see Lucy Neatby on Tan Cook Island. I'm so jealous. Lucy said to say hi to you. Aw, she's lovely. Yeah. She's so lovely. And <gasps> I got her book. Oh, nice. Her book or Hetty Van Gerp's book? Well, Hetty's book okay. where that features Lucy. Yeah. Can people order this book online? I'm think? sure they could. Kay. Yeah, I don't know where, but I actually got it in the gift store. Oh, nice. On Tan Cook Island. Lucy went and rustled up the owner. The little store was closed, of course, but she knows everybody on the island, and they all know her. She has a lot of pull. <laughs> and so she came and opened up this store. It's part gift shop, part museum, um, and they have the most beautiful things in there, from hooked rugs to antiques, all sorts of sort of marine-inspired memorabilia, yeah. And uh, the owner was just delightful. Well, and I, when I came in today, I saw some stuff on the back. It looks to me like maybe you got hooked on rug <laughs> hooking. I did. I did. And <laughs> we'll share that with you later. <laughs> yeah, cause, yeah, that was really quite inspiring. Everywhere mm -hmm. that you go in Nova Scotia, I mean, it's hard not to run into a place where you see this beautiful handwork right. in the form of rugs and wall hangings and pictures and art. It's just amazing. Well, like, I imagine you saw Lucy's house on Big Tan Cook Island. I, I sort of picture that as being a work of art in itself. Mm -hmm. It was. If I have a chance, I can post a picture too of her house because I took one. And Lucy's working on a special project for us. And I think because she's got classes that Cynthia will tell mm -hmm. us all about a little bit later. But um, I took yarn to Lucy because she was running out, <laughs> so it was an important trip. Mm -hmm. Well, let's just let's let's tell everybody. Lucy's working on a medallion-shaped blanket, a round a blanket that's done in the round, mm -hmm. and it's a double knit, so yes. it's completely reversible. Oh, it looks and amazing. Too. She loves color. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we sent her a package of all the brightest colors of. Is it Eden or Eden. Adam and Eve? Eden? Yeah. Yeah. And, and so then she she's using more... silver, which is yeah. a real neutral right. as the contrast in the part that I saw being made. Yeah. Yeah. It's really cool. Oh, it's going to be so nice. Yes. Yeah. Wow. She's and talented. And, yeah. So talented. Yeah. So tell us about your sweater. Well, I'm wearing my Pemberton Yay. pullover. This is another uh, accomplishment. Yeah, yeah. This was a knit along that we participated in last year, last fall. Mm -hmm. I can't even remember now. But uh, Blue Sky Fibers uh, has a product called Woolstock, and they sponsored a knit along on their Pemberton pullover. And we thought, let's do it, right? Let's yeah. let's have some fun. We we got a little group together, and we met. Really Four pretty, or five times. sort of Gansey pattern. I love it. Yeah, yeah. You got a lot of compliments the other day wearing it too. Yeah. So I've been wearing. This is my third day in a row. I have to confess. The weather here in Alberta is um, it's fall winter, uh, or maybe it's winter fall. Um, so we have sunshine, but the air is crisp. And so this sweater is just perfect for wearing. I have a downfilled vest that I can pull on over top. Mm -hmm and go for a walk uh, underneath a jacket. It's it's perfect. Mm -hmm. And then when you're zooming, it's a Gansey, right? So when you're zooming, the top half is the patterned half. So yeah. you look like you're wearing an intricately patterned sweater, although the bottom is plain. So got to love that. Yeah. And then set in sleeves, you know, so it's got mm -hmm. a nice fit. A nice shape. And um, I am wearing a t-shirt underneath because I have a plan to go and get my flu shot today. But, um, I can wear this next to my skin. 
the wool stock wool is just it's just a nice beautiful knitting yarn so if you are doing a sweater this is a yarn that I highly recommend mm -hmm. yeah it's lovely so we've had a few shortages we've had to wait a little while mm -hmm. to get some yarn is wool stock one of those yarns yeah it was yeah. and then but but in the meantime they came out with wool stock light yes so it just happened really nice that one came in while the other one was out right and we've only had wool stock light for a little while but I had a chance to work on it with our last flash mob yarn mm -hmm. and boy Barb it's a beautiful it's yarn. lovely yeah. isn't it do you want me to show yeah. you what oh, I've been yes, working I'd on love to see so it. it's, it's not finished but I did take it off the needles for photography here's here's a little bit of wool stock light I made a lot of swatches yeah, and uh, it's a beautiful 100% Peruvian wool, and it's unspun, sort of. So it, it is kind of tightly, I'd say, twisted, but um, it plumps up. Mm -hmm. I think you could even get, like, sport weight out of it quite easily. Well, that's, that's an it's interesting point, yeah, because I'm using a 3.5 millimeter needle, which is, I think, a U.S. 3... Mm -hmm. or yeah, it's, uh, or four maybe, US four. And I've got our flash mob from last month here, which was called Vine by, by Handmaiden, and uh, Woolstock Light, I'm using them together. So I am using a rather large needle, right, for this one. Mm -hmm. And the colors are, you know, the colors are vibrant. Woolstock um, has nice saturated colors. So if you're looking to do color work, it's a great yarn to work with. It's um, it's also, it's not toothy in that it's it's not scratchy. No. But that um, single ply yarn just it works really nicely if you're doing stranded color work. Yeah. And so, see, look how your ends. This is what I mean by it fattens up. Right. That because like that swatch has been washed. That yeah. end wasn't tucked in. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, you know. Um, so many people have been asking me for yarns for the capelet deja vu. Oh, yes. In exactly the same colors as, and, as I was wearing. Oh, right? okay. That cream, that gray, and that chartreuse. Right. And it's really hard to find. We have some in silky wool, right? Which is a DK, but we also have it in wool stock light. So I've been hesitant to kind of recommend that until I've had a chance to swatch it. But. Yeah, probably you I might need to double strand it. Do you think to get it? Oh, you're thinking I, you're thinking you can knit it single stranded, block it, and get a DK gauge. Yeah, look at you. I think so because I mean, look at this. Yeah, it plumps right up. Yeah. So I don't know. We'll have to we'll have to test it out and it's see. A, it's a really good point that you're making, which is that you should swatch, and that you should wash your swatch. Mm -hmm. Um, because we're, we've started another, another reason why I'm wearing this sweater today is because we've started another sweater class with Ann and Bud. Right. And I need to take my measurements on a sweater that fits me well. And basically, you measure the sweater. Mm -hmm. um, and then you have to create lots of swatches because when you're doing a sweater, you need to swatch, swatch, swatch. Yeah. And you have to wash your swatches because the, the wool changes when you wash it. That's right. right. Yeah. Yeah. So these swatches are really beautiful. They're kind of fun, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. This yarn was really nice by oh, Handmaiden too. They, they, and it, they went so well together. So yeah. Handmaiden's yarn was a merino singles. This is a Peruvian wool singles. Single? Um, but it's you know I'm like I said I'm wearing it today. Whether it's wool stock regular or wool stock light, it just feels really nice mm -hmm. on your skin. So uh, definitely a great sweater yarn. You know, you can just feel, too, the warmth and the thickness mm -hmm. in your swatches Yeah. when you put your hands over the wool stock section. Yeah, yeah. These are nice. all knit with different size needles, so you can kind of see oh. the... Yeah. Because, oh, yeah. This is a, it's a lot looser. Yeah. I had to keep going up a needle size to get gauge for the pattern. And, you know, that's because nobody's gauge is the same, and I'm not going to get the same gauge as the designer... Um, so mm -hmm. you just have to play around with your needles to, to get gauge and create a fabric that you're going to like. Yeah. Yeah. That's so. all, that's all what it's about is creating the fabric, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> exactly. So speaking of Handmaiden, mm -hmm. they tempted me, Cynthia, <laughs> with so many things when I was there. Mm -hmm. 
I, I may have put a few things into my suitcase. <laughs> Thank you, Ruth and Jenna. Um, but one of the things that they did uh, ship to us directly after that were these uh, new kits. Right. So this is new. Right. Remember Chunkadelic? Yes. Sadly, I we, we're not able to get Chunkadelic anymore. But Chunkadelic was our big fat jumbo yarn. Right. So this is... It was is... a superwash merino. Yeah. And uh, I think it was New Zealand. Um, lovely, lovely yarn. But this is 100% um, merino and it's not treated. It's not superwash. Mm -hmm. So this one... I'm really excited about because it's going to do some really interesting things too. Yes. It's great for, um, you know, garments and accessories, mm -hmm. um, sweaters, shawls, anything where you want that big, big chunky look. But I think you could make felted slippers out of it. Oh, nice. And all sorts of things yeah. where you want to take advantage of the 100% wool. Well, yeah. I mean... Just think about how nice these would be in leg warmers. Yes. You know, I, it, it's the season, it, it, for me, it's the type time of season where I wear a three-quarter length coat. Yep. Right? Because you want to cover your hips and your thighs, but then your legs freeze. <laughs> and so I have a pair of leg warmers. You could warmers. just make yourself a pair of pants. <laughs> I could. But leg warmers are faster In this to color knit. way. <laughs> Can't you see her coming down the street? So this looks like they dyed it in our colors. Yes. These are dyed in our colorways, nice. like kind of um, custom for River City Yarns. Yeah. We, we have these colors and we love them so much in Adam and Eve and Eden mm -hmm. um, that when Janet talked to us about colors, I thought, well, let's try this in that same palette. Right. Right. Because yeah. we've, we've really gotten attached to it. Yeah. So I think these would be great as a substitution for Thrummish. Mitts right, right. Or thrum tats. Yeah, so hat. we've uh, we've mislaid our sample of the thrumish mitt mitts and hat, but this is a pattern by Kate Atherley, mm -hmm. and it has you make um, a lined hat and lined mittens. And if you're familiar with thrumming, you have to go through that tedious process of pulling the unspun wool and creating the thrums and then knitting them in. So Kate did this design which she calls thrummish, which means that she's using, in, in these patterns we're using chunkadelic, but yeah. we think floof would work just as well. Oh, for sure. Instead of chunkadelic. Yeah. And you create these beautifully um, thick, luscious projects, accessories that um, are windproof, right? Because yes. they've got this lining of they're made with 100% wool on the outside. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll take care of that for you. <laughs> you can actually wear that she as a necklace me, that goes with she, your scarf. She sees me struggling with this. Um, so yeah, for thrumish hat and thrumish mitts, yeah. yeah. It's what I kind of refer to as the easy way out to do thrummed mittens right. or a thrummed hat or slippers. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, you're just um, carrying the yarn and making a, a stitch every so often. Yeah. And you don't have anything to cut, no thrums. The hardest part about thrummed mittens is making them, the little thrums. Yeah. They take yeah. forever. I know. Yeah. So, And yeah. some of us like that and some of us don't. Yeah. So, um, but, you know, whether you like it or not, you, you get the same effect. You just don't have to make all those thrums. And I this think looks this like is even better, a better effect, because the thrums sometimes can come apart. Mm. and fall out and these that never would oh. never happen to you, you you may be not making your thrummed mittens right if they're coming out <laughs> i'm gonna have to gonna have, I'm gonna to, have to take a lesson gonna in have thrumming. to sign you up for a class yeah i think stephanie's got something coming oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. okay so this looks like it has a pattern attached yes. to it so the other thing ruth was um who works with Jana. She has Toddwick Studios. Yes. And she was wearing the cutest little headband. And I said, where'd you get that? that and she goes, cute. well, this is the new pattern that we've designed for Floof. It's, you know, super simple. And um, so she said, well, we'll gift you some to put on the balls on the ball, ball band. So everybody yes. who buys one of these first, um, the first run that we got is going to get... Um, a pattern included for this oh, cute headband. Nice. And this little guy right here, 
is Ruth's son. Yeah, come on. <laughs> he's wearing, he's modeling the headband. He's modeling the headband. Nice. And he's cute as can be. <laughs> yeah, so we got them to dye up some semi-solids and uh, some tonals, tone-on-tones, mm. as well as some really brights. So have a look at our website to see the whole collection of them. Great. They're really beautiful. There will be a link uh, down below in the show notes. If you're watching the video, open up the notes down below and you'll, you'll see a list of all the um, products that we're talking about and a link to the website so you don't have to go searching for it. But if you do want to click the search button at rivercityyarns.com, floof is spelled F-L-O-U-F. Right, there's a U in it. Mm -hmm. and That's, how Canadian is that? How Canadian is that? <laughs> so what do you think? Do you think someone would find you in a Canadian snowstorm? Oh, yeah. If you had a hat on? Oh, yeah. This? You know, I think, I th in fact, I think if you were doing the headband, it'd be really cool to run a strand of that reflective thread in oh, there. Oh, yes. And then definitely, you know, in the dark months, you'd be seen by cars and, yeah. Yeah. I'm excited. I, I know. I know. I, I want to do a fun. headband. And then this one too, we, yes. we, we got a restock. Um, they got more of this yarn and this one is one of our favorite chunky yarns. You know, especially when it gets to the countdown coming up to the holidays where you want a gift. Mm -hmm. This little hat that Cynthia's <laughs> wearing, it's perfect. It's super simple. Yeah. And it takes one skein of thicket. So you only used one? Only one skein, yeah. And um, can't Ribbing remember. Ribbing all the way around? Yeah, I think we start at the top and work your way down. Mm. I'm pretty sure, can't quite remember now. Uh, but the pattern, it's a free pattern on our website. Yeah. It's called the Thick and Quicket, no, Quick and Thicket Hat. And then uh, the ribbing, if you, if you want to have it like really warm, you can tuck the ribbing inside and wear it like a oh, beanie. Oh, yes. And then you've got the double, double layer. layer around your ears and just yeah. a little little thinner hat. And put a pom-pom on it. Sure. Yeah. Uh, it needs a, right? Every, Did you have any yarn a left over for a pom-pom? Um, you could have made Boy, one. you know, um, I could have. I think I just, I think I used, I think I started at the top and just kept going until I ran out of yarn because mm. I knew that I could always tuck in the ribbing. Right. Yeah. And I think I saw you with a pom-pom in, in one of the images, one of the photographs. So yeah, I, you must I have probably, pinned one on. And... I probably did. But it definitely needs one, don't, don't you think? I mean, I think it's it just kind of jaunty, right? If you have a pom-pom. Yeah. But I mean, there's another pattern that's completely unisex. You know, yeah. there's probably a few guys who don't want a pom-pom on theirs. And yep. in that case... Um, you could just make it like that. The cool thing about this yarn, in my opinion, is the speckles. The, yeah, tweed, the tweed effect. effect that they've done is so nice. Mm -hmm. And there's actually, I think, three shades of tweed. There's a black, uh, a brown, a camel color, and a white. Mm -hmm. That's and, four. Uh, no, a black, a brown, and a white. Oh, three. I see. Yeah. Yeah. And so it... <laughs> shows up the white of course doesn't show up in in this colorway as much because of the light color mm -hmm. but when you look at it in a dark shade mm -hmm. you can see the white really well yeah there's a, a dark brown called burrowing owl mm. that's all this shade oh my gosh it's beautiful that blue with the brown is gorgeous yeah i mean you can't go wrong with handmaiden's colors they, they are, you know, they're unique, they're individual, yeah. they're vibrant, like that yellow. I love knitting with like, this color too. Yeah, it's gold, it's curry, yeah. it's sunflower, right? It's yeah. got all the shades in it. Yeah. It's beautiful, and the tweed mm -hmm. fleck, it's just, it's beautiful. Yeah. So if you get a chance to try this, try it out, let us know what you think. The colors too, some of them are named after national parks and some of them are named after different trees and... Oh. And animals, there's burrowing owl. Right. And, yeah. Yeah. So that was that was lots of fun. Mm-hmm. Oh, perfect. And what else? Yeah. So you had a good holiday. I had a good holiday. And you did some buying, but you didn't bring this back in your suitcase. You just placed orders while you were there. 
All right. Mm -hmm. well, good for and you. what about you? What were you up to this month? Ah, well, I took a couple of weeks off, meaning I didn't go into the store. I kind of worked from home, but I tried to unplug a little bit. Good. That's a, you know, that's a challenge, unplugging. It, it is. really is. Especially when I'm on the other end of the phone saying, <laughs> Oh my God, you'll never guess what came in today. <laughs> I'm sending you pictures with amazing colors and new yarns. and Yeah. I know. But we've been doing lots of classes. Yes. Yeah. In fact, um, in fact, we just recently had two classes on brioche. One was with Carissa Browning and the other one was with Olga Berea Kafelian. Oh, very good. Uh, Olga Jazzy. And so this is a little swatch that I did in her class. Oh, let's see. And I'm really proud of myself because this is brioche stockinette stitch. I've only done brioche oh. in rib stitch before. Yeah. Two color rib stitch. So this is one color stockinette stitch. Man, Olga is so inventive, Barb. Yeah, I it's know. amazing. I know she is. She, um, her class was, I thought, really well done. Um, she showed a lot of samples. She drew sketches to give you an idea of how the the yarns are working together, how the mm -hmm. stitches are being done. This um, is really stretchy. Yeah. She showed us brioche. She showed us the tuck stitch uh, ah. and fisherman's rib. She explained the difference between them. It's great. And now I'm inspired to do some of her brioche projects. Yes. But she's also coming back this month to do two more workshops. One is called Novelty Cables. And so speaking of headbands, that's where this one comes in. Because ah. she's gonna teach um, she's gonna teach new strategies for doing cables, which again that's that's old guy. Her mind just she takes a technique and then she says, you know, what can I do with this that's simple but super effective? Right, yeah. she um, gets her inspiration from things like egg cartons, <laughs> yes, and tiles on the floor, yeah, and you know all sorts of things, and then creates these three-dimensional right. So where she showed things. us a sample of stockinette stitch that she'd done on larger needles, and so when you block it, you pull it open, it looks like you've done lace stitches in between the the knit stitches, so the purl stitches on the other side. Um, open up and you can kind of see it in here but when yeah. on, on a bigger needle it's really exaggerated and it looks like complicated lace but it's just a brioche stockinette stitch so she's going to do a novelty cables class with us and that's all that the projects that she's going to show us are all headbands so a nice way to experiment with cables and create yourself a beautiful headband in the in mm -hmm. the progress in the in the process. Yes. And then she's also going to do a class on slip stitch color work. And again, just an amazing, um, an amazing designer. Uh, she's going to use two different gauges of yarn in this slip stitch color work to create, you, you know, you can knit one of her beautiful shawls. And then she showed us three designs that are not yet out. Uh, oh. in this last class so that's the other thing you'll get from <laughs> the seminars is you get to see kind of the things that the designers are working on mm -hmm. um, that they haven't shown to anybody yet yeah. it's really cool yeah and I then, like the idea oh. too of a project right yeah where you can actually end up with something after the class yeah that's a really nice way of putting the learning into practical yes so in this one, she, we, we mostly did swatches, and she encouraged us to swatch because brioche is not, um, it's not super, in, it, she makes it intuitive, but on the face of it, it's not super intuitive. So um, you do need to practice uh, the stitches, but then the projects that she recommended and got us started on mm -hmm. are projects that just reinforce that, um, that technique. And yeah. she talked about ways of making it, you know, one color, two colors, staggering the colors. So you can, you know, depending on how you're feeling, you can practice um, making it more complicated. Yeah. Yeah. It's keep making it a challenge or continuing to make it a challenge. And Clarissa, or Carissa, yeah. she had the beginner brioche class, yeah. right? Yeah. So it was kind of nice if you could take the beginner and then jump into the more advanced one. Yes. I mean, um, Olga 
started everybody off at the at the beginning as well. Oh, okay. Um, but she, you know, she took it in a different direction than Carissa did. So if you took both classes, it was great. If you missed Carissa's class, you could still carry on, but you'd have more homework, more practice to do afterwards because it takes a while with brioche, I think, for everything to kind of settle into your into your head. Yeah. Yeah. But while I was on vacation, Barbara, I also took a class with Anna Harakovic. <laughs> yes, she's the one that makes the great little moky moky mm -hmm. animals. Yes. What and did so you we make? Did, with... We did teeny tiny <laughs> cats. Look oh at that. Oh my God. And so she That's showed us so how to shape the bodies, how to add the legs, tail, how to embroider eyes. She showed us three different ways for creating the ears. Um, we talked yeah. about how to stuff them. Uh, we talked about what kind of needles are the best. Uh, so it was it was great. I what had kind so of much cat fun. is this? Uh, this I'm calling I'm calling this one tiger. It's oh, like yeah. a tiger stripe. But it was uh, right before Halloween, so we were doing kind of Halloween inspired cats. Fine. She, I want to do the gingerbread. Yes. Yeah. She showed us a vampire cat that hides in a violin case. Uh, <laughs> So it was it was so good. Her class was her class went and while we were knitting, when everybody was just you know just knitting, we had to knit fourteen rows around the belly. She showed us a little video of her gifts, like her um, stop motion animation videos. Oh yes, yes. So I tell you, we, it's so entertaining to take a class with yeah. Anna. And so yeah, coming up this month, we're going to do tiny gingerbread friends. And you can turn them into a garland. I'm thinking about making two and having them like dangly earrings oh, for the holiday season. Too. But um, yeah. you know, our our instructors that we're able to get Barb for our online workshops—they're just such delightful people. Yeah. And they have they have fun stories to share. So anyway, yeah, I had I had so That's much fun. That's so cute. It's a fat cat. Meow. <laughs> Yeah. Oh yeah. And then we nice. um I, I gotta put a I'm gonna put a picture up on uh, Anna's on our on our workshop uh, page, our hashtag RCY workshop and on Anna's Instagram page as well because then the cats can do a cat play video. with each with each other. Yeah. Are you gonna do a video too? Stop. I motion? probably won't have time, but um, I think I'll just take pictures of my cat doing funny things. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So nice. that was that was so much fun. Uh, again, I'm, I, you know, just been, take two weeks off and do nothing but take classes. I know. Yeah. And that's our theme for 2022 as well. Mm -hmm. We're going to have this theme about, you know, slowing down and taking it easy. Yeah. Knitting out of our stashes. Yes. If you have a big stash, you'll want to join in. We're going to have stash busters coming out yeah. left, right and center. If you have a big stash, you should definitely sign up for Ann Bud's sweater class in the new year and for Lucy Neatby's double knit class in the mm -hmm. new year. But in Ann's class, you're going to do a yoked sweater uh, from the top down. And so if you have lots of different colors, this will be a great opportunity for you to use them up. Yeah. And that's a class where gauge, you know, you can use any gauge of yarn. Yeah. She's and amazing. I think it would be good if we had some tools, too, for people to use up their stash. Oh, have mm -hmm. you got some tools in mind? Well, I actually, I do. <laughs> <laughs> also inspired by my trip to Nova Scotia. Okay, yeah. We, when we were there, I saw all these cool kits on rug hooking. Ah, here it comes, mm -hmm. yes, yeah. And for rug hooking, you can use practically any different type of wool. Ah, I right? see. But there's this one woman in Nova Scotia, her name is Deanna Fitzpatrick. Yes. And she's been doing rug hooking, I think, for 10 years. She's got an amazing studio. I didn't get a chance to get there, but I saw all the shops that carried her product. Yeah. And she's on YouTube, too. Oh, nice. She teaches and she sells these kits. Okay. And so guess what arrived the other day? Ah, that's what I saw in the back the kits, room when I came yes. in. <gasps> so I got to show these to you because yeah, yeah. they're super cute. Yeah. Big box. Yeah, and this is this is for you. Oh. Deanna and for me. Deanna talks a lot about holding on to your ideas and sketching oh, and drawing. She an, thinks a notebook. That, yes, that everybody should have a notebook. This is one of her rugs on the cover. Oh. 
Here's um, more. Here's her, so you can get a sense oh, of her. Oh, nice. On the back it says, yeah, hold on to your ideas. After many years of keeping sketchbooks and drawing, I've come to love this small format that I can take with me anywhere. That's oh, right. Oh, look at that. So here's the kits, and we'll, we'll take pictures of these um, in a bit and show you, but I pulled, I bought one when I was in Nova Scotia, and I started it. Oh, my goodness. Look at you. That's so cute. So last night, Halloween, Yes. I um, had the grandkids over. They yes. were helping us hand out treats. Yes. And Rayleigh picked up this, and she started doing some rug hooking. She fell in love with it. Oh, nice. Yeah, so it's such an easy thing. Anybody can do it. I think it'd be yeah. great for kids. Yeah. And um, so much fun. She includes uh, the burlap. Right. With the pattern printed on it. Right. And this is all surged. Okay. You go to her website to find out instructions. She has a beginner class there with about four or five different parts to it. So you can watch these short little 10 minute videos okay. and get started. And then all the supplies, the yarns, and yes. she has these other things that look to me like um, sheets of wool, sort of, that have yeah. been hand painted. Yeah. And then the, the cutters for these are so expensive. Are they? Yeah. So if you can if you can get it, that's great. And it's all pre-cut. Like yeah. you just have to rip it apart. Yeah. So cool. And so, I was thinking, you know, even for, you know, needle felting, if you wanted to do pictures or mm -hmm. for weaving mm -hmm. or so many different. Sure. Tapestry weaving. Wouldn't that be cool? Wouldn't that yeah. be cool? Yeah. So did you, how did you find picking up rug hooking? Because have you done it before? Never. So the video Super easy. Was, yeah. The video is great. She tells you how to hold your hook, kind of yeah. like a pencil. Yeah. She tells you to poke it in and to make a hole in the burlap. Yeah. So that your stuff from behind yeah. is easier to pull through. And it's really just like crocheting. You know, you just make a, a loop. Mm -hmm. You pull a loop through yeah. like that. Yeah. And to start out with, you just you bring your tail up and then ah. you trim these right. afterwards. Right. Yeah. But very, so if very you, easy. If you didn't like it, if you wanted to pull a line out, it'd be pretty easy to do that. It's kind of like yep. remember those remember those bed spreads that our mom used to have on the beds and they were like Chenille? Chenille. And I used to I'd have to go for a nap and I'd be mad and I'd pull the little chenille puffs out of the bedspread. She gets so that mad. That was you who did that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. What a fun game that was. Yeah. Yes. And it, it's slightly addictive. I, I just want to sit here now and hook. But, yeah, it's so much fun. So everything comes in the box everything except for the hoop. Correct. Okay. And that's because some people already have hoops, right? right. You might have a 10-inch hoop at home, but we have these on our website. If you don't have one of these, I highly recommend it because it's so much easier to do it when your um, canvas kind of is a little bit taut right. Right. in the hoop. And this hoop is a really nice one I found. It's a quilter's one, and oh. it... Um, has this kind of adjust adjustment on right. it to go tighter. Right. So yeah. Nice. Oh, that's super great. fun. And stash, you know, like talk <laughs> about stash. So we have a box in the back, and it's Christmas time. Tell everybody why we're laughing. We're laughing because Cynthia hates this kind of novelty <laughs> yarn. Right. And Barb loves it. Well, it's not that I love it. It's just that. Um, it does have a lot of texture. Sure. And sometimes you need that That's or you true. want that. It's true. So imagine this in the grass that the little sheep is on, right? Right, yes. It could really kind of provide some. So dig into your stash, grip, pick up a kit, and have some fun. I really. Yes. This, well, it, and it's really nice. It's, it really fits into the making theme, right? It does. Like, uh, I, think, I think you're right, we're, we're kind of heading into a time when we want to spend more time just making things, mm -hmm. but not always the same thing over and over again. Right. And did you say the rug cooking uh, 
implement comes with it, the, the hook? Yeah, they all come with a hook. Wow, that's nice because those are hard to find. And this one is one of Deanne's favorites. Oh. She talks about it on the video. Yes. That when she started, she had one just like this. And, you know, she holds it like a pencil. Okay. And um, she, can she ever hook fast? Yes. I guess it's just like us with knitting. Yeah. But um, but I think, you know, the, the thing about rug cooking is that it's kind of an art form, right? Yes. I, I'll, rug cookers will design their own design. So it's really nice that she's put the patterning on here to give, mm -hmm. you, to give you the outline. And then it's a bit like paint by number, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And you can yeah. do your own thing. Um, oh. You should see some of the different ones that we've got. I bet floof would be really fun in here too. Oh, yeah. She yeah. gave a big, uh, some roving in the kit too yeah. that I used in the sheep body. Right. So yeah, anything with, you know, chunkiness. Right. Roving, ribbon. Yeah, yeah. She talks about um, sari silks oh, in some of hers. Yes. But yeah. check these, check these out, Cynthia. What else have you got? I'll so this is you. the, this is called Lost Sheep and it makes a six inch by six inch square. So not, you know, it's not going to be huge. You can put it on your wall. Mm -hmm. You could have a whole series of them. So what else have we got? We have, uh, I think, seven titles. Okay. Winter parka. Oh, isn't that nice? They're all kind of winter uh, inspired. Yeah. Is that a poppy? Yes. Oh, then we should be doing that this month, shouldn't we? Shouldn't we? Yeah, yeah with Remembrance Day. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> meow. <laughs> it's a big a Persian little kitty. cat. You're passing back. That's funny. Isn't that cute? Yes. It just reminds me of those squash-faced Persian cats. Yeah. <laughs> but it could be another kind of cat. This one, too, oh. is really beautiful. I bought a few more of these because this one just so reminded me of autumn. Yeah. It's, it's... called County Moon. Mm -hmm. Nice. The yarns in it are so gorgeous, yes. too. And then there's this one. Wild Rose Field. Oh, how Alberta is that? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure there are wild roses in other places, but... And this one's really called The Village. Cool. Oh, that reminds me of the East Coast, hey, with all their painted houses. That's so nice. Yeah, Beautiful. so we're going to try this out, yeah. see. And um, Deanne's also got a book. She publishes this wonderful magazine. And so uh, for, the, for the kits that we've got, we'll pop one of these in your bag as well. Yes. Um, Full of inspiration. She goes, yeah, she goes through almost everything in here. Wow. The top 10 rug hooking tips, hooking with yarn and fleece, yeah. hooking with texture, what she loves about rug hooking, yeah. An invitation to visit her at her studio if you're ever in Nova Scotia. So she's not on Town Cook Island. No. She's nope. in on Nova Scotia. Yeah, she's in um, Amist, I think it's called. Or? Okay. Yeah. Nice. Isn't that nice? That's really nice. Well, that, wow, what a productive trip you had. Amherst. Amherst. It's quite a ways up. We didn't, we didn't get that far. It was right. about a three hour drive. Three hours, that's nothing for us I know. prairie girls. <laughs> <laughs> but I imagine, I, imagine, I imagine things were a little different in Nova Scotia too. Did you have any trouble getting in? with? Like, do you, no, none. We arrived at the airport. We had all of our documentation handy. They were only letting in people who were double vaccinated. Right. So it really felt safe. Good. And um, everything was great. Good. And you had good weather? Yeah, it started off rainy. Okay. But then it. it, it got but you nice. had your sweater, I so had my sweater. you were, you know. And that was the whole goal too, was to go there and to relax. Right. This house that we had was in the middle of a kind of thirty-acre plot of forested land, oh, next to a lake. It was dark at night. It was dark at night. There were two dogs that we got to play with <laughs> that we <laughs> that weren't ours. Right. Somebody else fed them. And yeah. It was great. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Lovely. So, so speaking of outdoors and seeing the stars at night, mm -hmm. let's talk a little bit about um, Erica Knight. Oh, okay. Would that be all right? Yeah. Because Erica Knight is coming to a Saturday seminar 
on November 20th, I believe. I'll check the date. Yes. Um, and uh, she's going to talk to us about two of her new pursuits. That's right. Yeah. Pebble Island and indoors. Mm -hmm. So tell us about Pebble Island, Barb. Well, I What's won't tell. One? I won't tell you all about it. I'll let save it for Erica to tell you about it. But uh, this is a new yarn from Rowan. Erica Knights helped develop the yarn, mm -hmm. um, the palette, color palette for it, and the designs used for it. It's such a beautiful yarn. Um, we hope that you sample it too. It's, I think, one of the nicest wools I've ever. Mm -hmm. Touched. It's really it's really beautiful. soft. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a high micron count, and they've got this great story. The sheep on this island, um, there's thousands of them, and they inhabit the whole island. It took two years to shear enough to send to the mill, and so it's going to be, I think, a one, a real staple for yeah. Rowan. All the photography, all the designs that have been photographed in here were photographed on Pebble Island? I don't think so. I think they were photographed somewhere okay. else because, uh, but... I mean, well, you can imagine you're certainly on an inspired. island. <laughs> all these little pebbles that are on the, on the beach, just... We'll have to ask Erica about that. Yeah, yeah. But there's a sweater that she's designed that looks just like that, mm -hmm. the patterning. So she's, uh, I really respect Erica. She's got such an amazing design sense. Mm -hmm. Every one of her garments have a trademark, um, either a texture or a slight little detail in it. They're really mm -hmm. nice. And this one, mm -hmm. this book is all inspired about being at home. And, you know, we all know about that. Right, home is where we've been for mm -hmm. a long time. Yeah. And so um, she's designed 10 practical projects that you can make with this book. And again, I think this would be a really nice theme for us going forward in 2022 mm -hmm. to take some time and make some things for our house. Yeah. Make some blankets to give away. And <laughs> you know what? Uh, um, I got to tuck Hayden in to bed uh, last night because, well... Oh. Just cause. But uh, when I went into his room, he's got a Martin Story pillow on his bed with the owl on it, Oswald the owl. And he has a um, handmaiden pillow that was a kit, you know, it was a color work kit. Yeah. Um, that, so Jennifer, you know, she's, she's knitted things, put them on her bed, but they've migrated onto his bed. So he goes to sleep every night with at least two hand knit pillows. And then he's got his baby blanket that I crocheted for him when he was a baby. It's on his bed as well. Yeah. And I thought, man, this kid's bed is the coziest looking bed I have ever seen. How old is Hayden now? He is seven, six, seven. six. He's the one it's who told one. his teacher that he wants to work at River City Yarns. <laughs> he's going to be a yarn store worker when he grows up. <laughs> Because he knows, like, you know, where the comfort is, right? Anyway, I, I was so impressed. So, mm -hmm. yes, I agree 100% with you, Barb. We need to spend some time creating yeah. that kind of cozy atmosphere for our, our own homes, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And yeah. I thought I'd show you, too, because I brought some of the yarns yeah. that she uses in the books. So I, I can show you. right back there? Yeah. Okay. And um, when you attend the Saturday seminar with Erica, she's going to talk to you about her design aesthetic, and you're going to find out um, what she, you know, what she feels makes uh, designs look cozy and comforting. But <laughs> here's some plant cozies, uh, which I think are really cool, because Erica also has an uh, an aesthetic that's about using up all your yarn. Mm -hmm. So she always includes projects where you can use up a bit of yarn. There's a lampshade done out of this color of Kids OKs. Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? Mm -hmm. And it's just, you know, put around a wire frame. You can get these frames at Ikea. You can? Mm -hmm. If they have stock. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's right. You can't get any couches or chairs right now, but you might be able might to get a lampshade. You might be able to, to get a lampshade. <laughs> yeah. Look at this wall hanging. Oh, isn't that cool? Mm -hmm. It's done on big needles. Yeah. Yeah. 
And uh, what's that done in creative linen? So yes, she does a lot of creative linen for mm -hmm. blankets and cushions. And creative wall linen hangings. is a linen cotton blend. It's lovely, mm -hmm. and it comes in some beautiful colors as well as these lovely natural shades. Yeah. We have the black; it's just on back order. <laughs> And these pillows have stripes on them, and then it looks like a bit of embroidery on top. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost like a duplicate stitch, yeah. hey? We'll have to find out if that's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So come and sign up for our September, or sorry, September, our Saturday seminar with Erica. It's $25 Canadian, usually about $20 uh, US. And um, it's, it's an hour where we just have a delightful conversation with Erica. Mm -hmm. She shows us all kinds of cool things. Look at this sweater. So Beautiful. This sweater has an unfinished look to it. Yes, she'll often seam on the outside. Mm -hmm. And it's got a really beautiful patch uh, pocket on it that's also overstitched on the outside. Yeah. There's a patchwork blanket in there too, Cynthia, mm -hmm. that we it. have all the colors for. Oh. Yeah, so that would be a lovely thing. And it's done with Rowan Felted Tweet Erin. And this is another one. I love this yarn. And um, we've never, we haven't had the Erin before. We just brought it in this year to make this. So it's uh, twice the thickness of the Felted Tweet. Oh my God, it's so soft. Nice. Yeah, it's beautiful. So if you had some felted tweed at home, you could supplement it. You with could the hold earring. it double. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So go through your stashes, mm -hmm. figure out what you want to make. And mm -hmm. this one, whoever, we just announced this today, Jen and I, but if you sign up for Erica's class um, on Pebble Island, you get a special promo, 20% off of Pebble Island kits. Okay. or so sign up for the Saturday seminar with Erica Knight and in the seminar itself and no um, when you sign up you're going to get a code oh. so you want to sign up early because we only have um, a limited amount of these kits but you can nice. buy either uh, Dot or Alex nice for 20% uh, off and it, it's our way of um, encouraging sampling you know it's um there's some beautiful sweaters in here connie's doing one that takes one of each color a striped sweater mm -hmm. uh, but you know sometimes you want to explore and just sample the yarn a little bit before making the sweater investment so we put together these kits for this beautiful um, long scarf or hand warmers mm -hmm. that you can use. Eric has made those hand warmers really long so they go up inside the sleeve of your coat. It's well, we're, we're kind of getting ready for, you know, gift knitting, right? Mm -hmm. Kind of getting ready. We're starting our gift Absolutely. knitting because we're starting early. Yeah. So this would make a nice present for someone, oh. you know, if you needed a yeah. gift or you want to gift yourself. I think it's like 21 micron wool. Well, like it's so soft to you can tell as soon as you feel it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's lovely. And they're not merino sheep. They are, they, they are a form of, yeah, they they're are similar? a breed, okay. a certain, but you know, the Falkland Island, the British sheep are slightly different, right? Yeah. And I think. I don't whole, really know that much about them. The whole the reason why it's such high quality too is that they hand shear the sheep as opposed to. Um, other processes, some that are more with machines. Okay. And um, the mill that they send it to has got brand new equipment. Mm -hmm. And so the whole mill um, washes, processes it, takes any sort of fiber out of it and um, spins it in a way that maintains the softness. Oh, nice. They even steam the yarn so that there's no floof flying around in the factory. Mm -hmm. It's great for the employees so they're not breathing that oh, in. Yes. But yeah. it also prevents cross-contamination from colors. Oh. And so all of this palette that Erica's designed um, remains true and intact. 
Nice. Yeah, it's amazing. I was able to listen to the fellow from the factory talk right. about the production. Oh, isn't that great? Mm -hmm. Oh, good. And I'm sure Erica will chat about that too. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, that's so much, so much information. I know, and it's so exciting. All right, so SPY 21, Barb. This yeah. is our SOC projects for the year 2021. Out of this book, Operation Sock Drawer. That's right. What a fun thing this has been. I, we've got a lot of great feedback from it. We have. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, now, you know, now it's getting a little challenging, right? Because we're we're getting close to the end of the year. We're trying to yeah. keep up with all the fall knitting and the socks. And so, yeah. I, I, you know, some of you may be starting to peter out a little bit, but we're gonna we're gonna encourage you to continue on, <laughs> and to yeah. you know. This one, I think, I feel like this month is better because it's done on worsted weight yarn. Yes. So for this month, our 11th month, we've uh, chosen to knit a prey, which is done in worsted weight yarn. And I just finished uh, my first one last night. Yes. Yeah. So show so me. Let me show you this. Oh, my gosh. I'll show you this. I, I have some markers in on this side because I have to make the second one. And so I want to exactly make sure I know where it is. So Cynthia, tell us, there's two techniques that are kind of interesting on this sock, right? Well, there's a, there's a few techniques that are interesting on this sock. It's a toe-up sock. So you start down there. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is written by Felicia Lowe. She's the owner of and the founder of Sweet Georgia Yarns. Um, and so you start with the um, Judy's Magic cast on. Okay. Um, and then you increase... Uh, to the toe and then there's this eye of partridge that goes around the middle of the foot and that sucks everything in right around here so you don't yeah. have any you know kind of gappiness in there bet you would keep your foot really warm too it feels nice it's mm -hmm. got a really cool feel to it there is an afterthought heel on here so you just put in a bit of waste yarn oh, cool. and then you put in your heel afterwards i haven't blocked this yet so with afterthought heels they look kind of square and yep. kind of bunchy in here until until it's been blocked but i did try this on i, I feel like the heel's a little bit longer okay. than i need it to be so i the nice thing about after the heels, you can just pull off your, pull out your cast off, put it back a little bit, and then um, carry on. You could adjust it yes. even afterwards because it's not built in. You know, it's it's yeah. an afterthought heel. And then the cuff is done in brioche. Now that's cool. It's very cool. And I'm going to put this sock on a little bit later and just show you how cool this is. How because, much it stretches? Yes, because I love knee highs, but I can... Oft, I very rarely can wear them because I have shapely calves. I have <laughs> very shapely calves. And so trying to get a sock on over my calves is almost impossible. It ends up being too tight, cuts so, off my circulation. This fits like a charm. That brioche is so stretchy. Look at that. Now, uh, one of the things that Olga talked to us about in class is that brioche is also a yarn suck. So you're gonna use a lot more yarn oh, in brioche. Okay, that's why you said you might need more. Yes, so I, uh, I, I'm i doing this one with two balls of uh, Barocco Ultra Wool. Mm -hmm. We have some right there. Yes, yes, here, uh, here. You hold the yarn, mm -hmm. I'll hold the... We chose two different colors of uh, Barocco Ultra Wool. And I Purple, thought- Purple, which is Cynthia's yeah. favorite. <laughs> and then a more neutral gray. Yeah. And I thought I could probably, I, I thought I could do both uh, with just the- Soft. Just the two balls. But this is how much I have left of the gray. Oh yeah, you're gonna so need another one. I have one. less than half, so I'm gonna need another one. Now, if you did it all in one color, Maybe, Maybe you would need one ball for each sock. That's a possibility. And what Felicia did was she used um, a different yarn. She used three colors. She used a different yarn for the toes and the heels, and she used a fingering weight double-stranded. Oh. So you could, you know, if you got two balls of the ultra wool or something like that, um, you might be able to, to squeeze it out if you used a different yarn for right. the toes and the heels, like Felicia did. Um, but you, you'd recommend two balls of each color then, right? No, it, I, I definitely have enough of... The purple? I'm pretty sure I have enough of the purple, although I did bring my scale to weigh it. 
So I think okay. I think you could do the purple. I think there's enough in there. Um, but yeah, I, I think I would like to try this sock again with um, all in one color. Oh yeah. I think that would look really nice too. Mm -hmm. But I was just saying, uh, you know, I think I would wear these it, like with my boots on. Yeah. Remember how I was saying before I like to wear leg warmers in mm -hmm. this weather? I mean, they're built right in. You know, you could probably forget the sock too. Imagine what great um, leg warmers these would be in brioche. Oh, absolutely. You could absolutely. rib down here, rib up here mm -hmm. and brioche the leg. Yeah. Wow, how many stitches is that? Do they, does she have you cast on? Is it the same number as on mm -hmm. the foot? Yeah, and the same size needle. You're kidding. No. Oh my God, because it almost looks like it's a lot bigger. Mm -hmm. Like a bigger needle. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And more stitches. Yeah, well, so it's more passes because every time you do, a, you, you do one row where you do your brioche knit and then you do another row where you do your brioche pearl. So um, every... Every, every time you see a knit stitch here, it's actually two passes right. with the yarn. Um, but it doesn't take long to make. Uh, I think maybe I've been working on it for, I think, I'm three nights. Wow. You know, especially with an afterthought heel. Yep. And again, sometimes we worry about afterthought heels not fitting around the instep. Um, and so Felicia has cleverly put in some rows of ease in here. So that's in the pattern. There is um, one thing in the pattern that confused me a little bit, and that's that at times she uh, says switch to your smaller needle, but there is no smaller needle requirement in the needle section. So I knit the entire thing on one, one set of needles, and I use double pointed needles, even in this thicker section in here. Mm -hmm. Yep. So uh, cool. sure like my flip sticks. So you'll be out uh, cross country skiing this year. <laughs> I love these In your these Pemberton socks. pullover yeah. and your Apre socks. Yep. Yeah. Right on. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, go I'm definitely going to do these again. I see his snowshoeing, you know, with, with uh, husky dogs. <laughs> I see myself walking around in boots with leg warmers built right in. Or maybe just relaxing, you know, reading a book and, uh -huh. uh, and or even watching, watching TV. Watching people and... ski down the ski hill mm -hmm. and you've mm -hmm. got, you know, a hot cider. I, yeah, yeah, I can get yeah. into that. Yeah. So I, I love these ones. I think this is a great way to kind of finish up the year. We, we still have one more yeah. uh, pattern left to discuss. And uh, so that's got me completely sidetracked. So I, I did finish <laughs> one of my Sadal socks. Yay. That's the one with the kind of cable pattern in there. Yeah. Oh, and I've, man, those are pretty. I've got the other one, you know. Yeah, on the go. But I haven't quite finished them yet. So, okay. yeah. And, you know, I did enlist a little help from Pat, mm -hmm. and she did one of these for me, and I have another one that's uh, up to the heel. Okay. So soon I'll have a pair of these. Yes. This was Those from are so pretty. month 9, I think. 9, 10, 11, or 9, yeah. 10, 11. One, Something in one like of those that. two orders, yeah. And then these ones are now done. Ah, My ice cream socks. Nice. Yeah. Hold those so, up again. What, do you remember what colorway that is? Uh, I think this is chocolate mint ice cream or chocolate okay. chip mint or something. Yeah. Right. So on this one, the the color work isn't done. So you're going to go in I, and duplicate um, yeah, stitch? Yeah, I have to duplicate stitch it. Yeah. Yeah. I just thought that would be a lot faster. That's a great adaptation, by the way. Yeah. 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 So this was our month one sock. I know. Yeah. yeah. This yarn, too, is so soft. It's gorgeous. There, I think there are a few of those kits left. There are. Yeah. But I don't know where she gets it, but it's just so soft. Oh, it's over the moon, isn't it? I gave Sabrina my leftovers, and she's going to make little hedgehogs. Of course, yes. <laughs> little mochi mochi. Yeah. Yeah. Out of the... Uh, oh, nice. Yeah. That's lovely. All right, so that's our uh, sock projects for the year 2021. Um, We've got one left. We do. Yeah. Do we decide what it is? I think we did, but I can't remember what it is. We'll have to go back to okay. our notes. Okay, okay. So keep to stay tuned. Yes. We'll, oh, we'll tell you what that one is uh, in December. We're going to put together kits for this one, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. Um, we, we will put together kits with our recommended color combinations and the right amount of yarn. Yeah. Um, but if you, you know, if you wanted to pick two colors of... Uh, Barocco Ultra Wool or 
Rowan uh, pure wool worsted. We thought we'd oh, go yeah. with the super wash wool. Yeah. Yeah, because, you know, you like to, you, sometimes you just machine. like to put your socks in the wash machine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This this yarn is so soft. I know. It's, um, and 100% wool, guys. Like, you know, if you're going to put time into socks, um, don't don't waste your time with acrylic or acrylic blends. Go well, they the just wool. don't absorb moisture either. They don't. Right? They don't wick moisture away the same way, and they're, they're just not as warm and insulating. Yeah, and they so. don't hold their shape. And yeah. So yeah, yeah. You might have something in your stash that you want to check out too. Right. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Okay. So we have a couple more things, Cynthia. Yes. This morning. Yes. I went to the post office because they had dropped a card in our mailbox. Okay. And the camp color was there. <gasps> the new colors? Mm -hmm. Ooh. So talk about fall, you guys. If yeah. you want to see a beautiful palette, yeah. we've got one to show you. Okay. This is a fun fingering weight merino that we've been playing with uh, from Cameron Design Group. Yes. They're the same company that uh, we buy Shibui yarns from, mm -hmm. and they came out last fall with this campaign of fun, super saturated colors yeah. and hand painted colors yeah. in 100% fingering merino. In fact, one of my friends told me that she's going to order all the pride colors. And she just them. did. We did just you? filled her order. <laughs> because, yeah. because they've just nailed it in yeah. terms of those bright colors. But this new color collection is different. That's right. There's two. Okay. There's one called Beware of the Kraken, <laughs> yes. which is all about mythical creatures. Yeah. And these are um, some of the colors that are in it. Right. So here we go. We're just going to show you one of each so you can get a sense of the palette. All right, I have to turn these labels so that they're Of course you up. do. That's just a retailer thing. <laughs> Definitely have to have the labels facing in the right direction. So Look at these this colors. is it. And they've teamed with some great designers. Uh, I don't have the, all the designs here in front of me today, mm -hmm. but we do have them up on our website and you have to go take a look at them because there's a real great portfolio of shawls, there's a dress, yes. there's a skirt, uh, all done in these colors striped. It's really, really cool. Mm -hmm. Very trendy. Yeah. And then the other one is called um, Beware of the Kraken. This one is named after... It's on the front. Stirred, not shaken. Right. Yes. Stirred, not shaken. Okay, I just saw James Bond. <laughs> you saw you went and saw the movie? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I should know this one. And there's one more. Okay. So these are all named after like cocktails and uh, different terminology like that. Right. One, this one's called Last Call. And it's a beautiful hand painted that where they've taken all of these colors and integrated them into one skein. Nice. Did you see the shawl um, or the cowl pattern? Yeah, I believe I did. Yes. Yeah, several people bought that over the weekend and right. That's we the shipped one. them out yes. this morning. Yeah. So just a lovely palette of uh, sort of, I call them autumn colors with this mm -hmm. beautiful shot of blue. Such a gorgeous blue. That cropped sweater uh, was in this with the black, yes, yes. that's Wasn't that gorgeous. Something? I have my eye on that mm -hmm. one. So they've taken some colors from the rest of the palette, the neutrals, mm -hmm. and added those into the patterning as well. Mm -hmm. Is I, you know, this is a hundred percent wool, merino wool, super wash, fingering weight, as you said. So I mean, that's that's a great thing because if you wanted, like like you were talking about with your sweater, mm -hmm. if you wanted a DK or a worsted weight gauge, you can hold two strands together. Super, super soft. And I really love the way they're supporting this yarn line with, yeah. you know, designs. Speaking of which, there was a lot of color work that we saw in those designs. Mm -hmm. Some of it was simple, like striping. Some of it looked a little more complex, like maybe it was in Tarsha 
or slip stitch color work. Mm -hmm. So I think it's good to know we have some classes coming up. Uh, Holly Yo is going to be teaching an yes. Antarsha class this month. And Carissa Browning is teaching one on mosaic knitting. And uh, Olga Berea Kafelian is doing one on slip stitch color work. So the timing's perfect. You know, if yeah. you really needed to get a little bit of help, right? And you wanted to do some intarsia, yeah, or slip yeah. stitch or mosaic work, yeah. I really think too that it would be fun to do some marling. Mm. You know, like there's mm -hmm. now so many colors in the line. Mm -hmm. You can pick from three other palettes, right? And you could have some fun if you had three colors. Mm -hmm. You could make a six uh, color marl. Right. And do like kind of a gradient fade yes. as well, right? Like, like get look those, at that. Get all those, you know, oranges to reds together. Yeah. And create something that, so you're, you know, as you change the colors. Yeah, no, you've got it right there. Look at that. Yeah. My gosh. So, yeah, what you're saying is like, you know, do, do these two held together and mm -hmm. then two of these and then these two held together and then two or of these. Or even this one by itself mm -hmm, and then mm -hmm. with this one. Yes. Yeah, so you could in expand your marl palette if you had six colors. Oh my gosh. Right? right? You could Just have think like, if you did three. It could be really graduate, gradual change, yeah. right? Uh, if you were using three strands mm -hmm. together. Yeah. And um, Cecilia's got a new a um, mini book, oh. a field guide oh. <laughs> with a modern daily knitting okay. where she's got five projects inside oh. that she's marled. Nice. So that it's kind of like a, a beginner's guide to learning how right. to do marling. And just another form of color work, right? Marling mm -hmm. is another way of creating uh, another, you know, another color design. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. They did a blanket um, out of felted tweed. And it's gorgeous. There's so many colors in felted tweed, right? right? Yes. And now there's even more because felted tweed has come out with felted tweed color, right? Which transitions on its own, right? So, oh, I'm, I can hardly wait for Cecilia to come up with something <laughs> on that. Oh, I also I, I also want to mention just on the topic of workshops mm -hmm. that if a toe up sock kind of scares you a little bit. Do you have? We have a class on that. Oh, good. Yeah. Who's going to teach? Holly's teaching it. Um, she'll she'll teach you a Turkish cast on afterthought heel and best ways to bind off at the top so that you have, again, that's the trick with um, uh, toe up sock is you've got to make sure that your bind off is nice and loose. Right. Yeah. Do we have any other classes coming? Is Anne going to be coming? Well, Anne is, Anne is teaching classes uh, right now and next month, but they're all sold out. So mm -hmm. if you want to uh, take a class with Anne Bud, we do have a sweater class coming up in January. Oh, we do? Mm hmm Yeah. So you booked her again because yeah. we had people wanting yeah. to take that sweater class. Is it top down? Yep. Or, okay. Yep. So we did, we did a set-in sleeve class, and we're now working on the saddle shoulder design. And in the new year, we're doing a top-down yoked sweater. And I am so excited about that one, Barb. So I just think yoked sweaters are so nice. And yeah. again, you know, a, a really good opportunity to use up colors in your stash. Yes. Yeah. And she's got a yoke that has that saddle shoulder to it too, right? Or some sort of set-in sleeve? That w no, no, I don't believe so. Okay. I could be wrong. I, but in this class, we'll be doing a yoke sweater just like the one you're wearing. Okay. Yeah. 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 So that's really fun. And how about um, There's more. Kate? Yeah. What's... Kate's coming to do a class on better edges. So if you want to do, again, this, this really helps with Christmas knitting because we often tend to do things like hats, cowls, mittens, but even sweaters, you know, any place where you have to apply an edge or cast mm -hmm. on, bind off. Places where you want to have a nice smooth edge, you're not going to seam it up, so it's going to be exposed. Uh, this would be a great class with Kate on how to do better edges. That's nice. I know Holly does a lot of finishing work too, and it's that attention to detail it's, that yeah. makes all the difference, Absolutely, right? yeah. yeah. And uh, Carissa's coming in to do breaking plaid with us. Oh. This is such a fun class. Carissa teaches how to make a beautiful plaid design by combining marling and a double knitting and it's fascinating i know i saw your swatch <laughs> it was really cool yes yeah check that one out for mm -hmm. sure yeah 
She's got a, a design that you'll get in the class for the breaking plaid uh, bandana. It's like a cowl, but you can. She'll also show you how you can convert that into a scarf, or into um, it's a scarf, or into Probably you can just shawl. do dish cloths if you want to. Mm. You can do squares. So nice way to practice as well. But it's uh, it's 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 just such a cool technique. Mm -hmm. um, so you, you need to take it. And then, of course, we have Lucy coming. She's going to teach double knitting in the yep. new year. And yep. what else? She's doing two double knitting classes. So oh. there's like a, a first steps in double knitting, and then there's a next steps in oh, double good. knitting. So that'll be in January and February, right around the ski season. So she's going to fit in a ski trip in between those two Ooh. classes. But uh, also, I wanted to let you guys know that we haven't forgotten about the crocheters. We have um, two classes coming up in November. Someone just asked me about that the other Perfect. day. Perfect. So crocheters, you need to take both of these classes. The first one I would recommend is, uh, well, you take them both. But one of them is with Carissa Browning, and it's, uh, it's on Yip Yips. Oh, those are the little like, creatures. Yeah, from yeah. Sesame Street. Right, the aliens, and they would walk around discovering things and saying yip 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 yip. So uh, she's created a crochet pattern for mini yip yip. So you'll learn a lot of crochet techniques in that one. You don't have to be a super stellar crocheter to take this class, and you but will you have finish. To have some experience. It's good. It's good to know how to chain and how to do a single crochet. Okay. But you can learn that right on our website. Mm -hmm. uh, if you go to podcaston.ca, click on the playlist, you'll see a how to crochet uh, class that we've put online free so of charge. So you brush up before her class. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And we're recommending Rowan hand knit cotton for that one because it oh. has such bright, vibrant colors. Fun. And so you can make them for, uh, you know, for gifts, for Christmas. Could you make yip yips out of these? You could, absolutely. You probably need to double strand it, right? Because you want a little thicker ah. yarn for this project. But absolutely, I mean, you could make a little keychain version. You right? could make a, a mini one. yip yip. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, the other class that we have for crocheters is called Crochet a Shawl from a Chart. And again, crocheters, this is a must a must-have class in your uh, learning repertoire. Both Barb and I have taken this class, and Heather will teach you how to follow the symbols on a crochet chart. You know, back when I crocheted, there wasn't, there weren't charts. No, no. And so, what would you say is the best reason to learn how to crochet from a chart? Oh, because it's so intuitive. You can actually see what you're supposed to do. Right. And so it's just learning those symbols, I think, that is the challenge with right. it. But once you've got that, once Heather's kind of unlocked that key for you, you'll be sailing. Yeah. And you can actually check your work and know exactly what round you're on. Yeah. And it also opens up a whole new repertoire of crochet stitches because a lot of the really beautiful designs are coming out of Japan and Russia. Mm -hmm. um, and they're, you know, they're charted because yeah. it's like a universal crochet language. So definitely take this class, you'll, you'll complete a shawl. And in Carissa's class, you'll complete a yip-yip. So you will have something to show um, when the class is done. Do you think, think we'll ever go November. back to in-person classes? I, you know, I get a lot of great feedback from participants on why they love the online classes. Mm -hmm. So. I don't think we will, Barb. I think mm -hmm. uh, there's just so many incredible advantages. A, you get to meet with an instructor and it, you know, they don't have to be flown in. Um, you can talk to them without a mask. Yes. And so the cost, like just, just the entry level into the class, our costs have come way down because we're not paying for all that airfare yeah. and hotel accommodation. I think there'll still be retreats, you know, because people will want to get out and... Yesterday, yesterday in Ann Bud's sweater class, uh, I had one participant say, hey, hello, Sarah, and hello, Linda, because they were in another class together. Oh, yeah. So there is, there is that, you know, you, you start to build friendships. Community. Yeah, absolutely. We have to also put a plug in for our Monday night. Yeah. Makers, Makers Meetup. Meet up. Yes. So go to the website and register for this one. Tell, tell everybody why. It's kind of our show and tell. You know, here, because our store's kind of been closed for so long, 
this used to be the place that people would come to show off all their projects. <laughs> and I know a few of my friends have all been making capelet deja vus lately. <laughs> and you have to come and show them because they sent me pictures. They're yeah. so gorgeous. So it's our opportunity to connect in and to say, hi, how's it going? Give you a little bit of floor time to show off the projects, the great things that you've been working on. Yeah, it's like a, it's like a stitch and bitch. We call it a maker's meetup. Uh, and it's free. Uh, it's an hour, maybe a little bit more than an hour. Mm -hmm. And we do it on Monday afternoons, or evenings, depending on where you are in the country. And we have folks from all over Canada and North America that join us. It's a little bit early in the morning for people in uh, Europe and uh, other uh, on the other continents, mm -hmm. but uh, so it's primarily North American. It's knit, it's crochet, it's rug hooking, it's yeah. whatever you're working on, right? You just bring it with you and yeah. just socialize. And if you don't want to show your work, that's fine too. You can take a pass. In fact, our group's getting bigger and bigger, and we yeah. might have to have more <laughs> passes. Well, it's, but, uh, it's, yeah, it's it's, nice. it's joining in with the you know a similar, familiar, friendly group of friends once a week, mm -hmm. and um, you know building a community of makers across North America. And we talk about you know sometime in the future uh, attending a retreat and you know having a makers meet up there so you know that may come too mm -hmm. so join us definitely the login codes are on the website if you sign up for if you register you'll get the login codes and a little treat in your download so definitely do that mm -hmm. yeah and i think that's about it you know we're next time we come back we'll come in with some projects that we can uh, share to help speed up christmas knitting yes some gift yes. ideas and yeah. things like that. Things you can do between December 7th and December 21st Yeah. before you have to get it wrapped up. All right, All so right. where do you off to this afternoon? Oh, I've got, I got lots of stuff to do. I'm, I'm doing Christmas knitting and, you know, trying to get on top of that. I'm gonna finish my other sock. How about you? I'm gonna go back and finish uh, this whip. I like to work on it during the days because okay. it's too hard to see. Oh, I'll just show is you. That black? Yeah. Oh. It's really dark, so Can it's really hard it? to see. <gasps> Barb, this is beautiful. Uh, isn't it? What is this? This is the Seaworthy Gansey cap oh. from Church Mouse. Nice. And what yarn are you using for this? This is Drops Merino Extra Fine. Okay. In black. On a small needle. On a tiny needle, yeah. I'm yeah. really compressing it. Yeah. Um, because I wanted, Mario wanted it a little bit bigger mm -hmm. than my first swatch. Okay. And um, I found that, that um, I like the stiffness of it, you know, the right. merino was so soft that this will help it stand up. So right. I'm almost at the top of the brim. Oh, nice. Yeah. It's and got we, a bit of a fez look to it. It hey? does, yeah. 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 Oh, very nice. And this is uh, Cecilia's sequin stitch. Oh, so you changed the pattern. So I'm knitting four, purling two, knitting four, purling two. And because of the stitch count, mm -hmm. it starts to spiral. It does, yeah. So your stitch count is not a multiple of six, or sorry, it's a multiple of six plus one or a multiple of six minus one. Yeah. Nice. Isn't that fun? Yes. And then I'll show you one other thing that I'm working on. Lucky Mario. I know. What else have you got I there? I gotta get that off the needles too because <laughs> he wants to wear his he ears are cold <laughs> every day. Okay, so this is my other project. Oh. Did you see this one already? I saw it on Maker's Meetup, but oh, I haven't yeah. seen it in person. That's, so that's the, the wrong back side. side. Mm -hmm. Okay, you wow. guys, so I love doing blankets, as you know. This is a feather and fan pattern, which is one of my favorites. It's super easy. It's a repeat of 18 stitches. And in this blanket, I use three different kinds of textures. So I always use something smooth and soft. I try to do it in a chunky weight. This one is Blue Sky Fibers Extra. It's a merino nice, yeah. alpaca and it's so beautiful. Um, I love the springiness of it and I love the stitch definition in the stockinette sections. The second yarn is a textured yarn. I like to put in a texture, and in this one, 
I'm using one from Noro. Is that Noro Ito? No, this is, um, what's it called? Um, starts with a K. Oh. Kansashi. Right. So this one is a mohair, silk, wool, viscose, and 3% polyamide blend. Kind of like a boucle. Kind of like a boucle. But what it does is it's just got really rich texture and it comes in some beautiful shades. I'm thinking I might have to do a green blanket or a blue blanket and pop this in. Mm -hmm. uh, this one's just really neutral, but it really adds some texture. And then the third yarn is um, something, I like to use something really soft. Mm -hmm. And so I've got two um, yarns that I'm using. One is one that has been discontinued. It's from my stash. It's Rowan Finest. Here's oh, the right. little ball. This right. is uh, a blend of extra fine merino, cashmere, and royal alpaca. So we were talking about uh, subbing royal finest out with uh, Rowan Baby Cash Soft, right? Yes, yeah. yes. And uh, I had some of that too. And I'm using, with that, this one. This is uh, from Fleece Artist. It's called Alpaca Merino. And it, too, is a blend. Mm -hmm. And they're both really fine. So I'm holding them together to plump it up. And th that's the other thing. I think it, you can pick anything from your stash. You don't have to worry about gauge so much. Uh, because in finer yarns, you can just put two or three together and um, come up with something that you can use on a six millimeter needle. That's the needle size that I've had, that so I've picked. Six millimeter or US 10? Yeah. That's kind of your favorite go-to blanket needle? Yeah. Yeah. Do you find these blankets get heavy, Barb? A little bit. Uh, it's not too bad right now, but what I've noticed is that um, to save wear and tear on your needles, mm -hmm. because Blankets are really hard on your needles. Yeah. Um, I like to flip it around holding the wool as yeah. opposed to holding on the needles like this. Yeah. Because it's just too much strain both on the needles and on your hands, yeah. right? So I, we, we know we've got a few folks out there who are making those queen size blankets out of very chunky yarn. And using 20 millimeter needles. Mm -hmm. And it's, it is really hard on, the, on your hands, on your wrists, and on your needles. Yes. You can twist yeah. the needle tips right off the cords. And it's not the needle's fault. No. You know, um, no, that's for sure. Yeah. So, yeah, you do need to kind of pick it up by the yarn, turn it around, work your way back. Forth. And it's not yeah. a, like this size that you're doing can be a traveling project. Oh, absolutely. But those giant blankets can't. Right, yeah. yeah. The other thing is that those really big blankets don't have a lot of structure. So if you were going to do a really big blanket, do you think you might consider doing it in panels? I would. Yeah. I definitely. And you know, Cynthia, I feel that those are not easy to knit either. I know a lot of people think that they are because they're such big needles and chunky yarn, but they're really difficult to get your needle in and wrap it around and pull it through. Mm -hmm. I think I'd almost crochet one of those. Mm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With a really big crochet hook, I think it'd yeah. be much easier. Yeah. You just single crochet. Yeah. 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 Good thoughts. Yeah. Good thoughts and nice projects. We look forward to next month when uh, you know you'll be showing us a picture of the hat because Mario won't take it off his head. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Perfect. And the other whips that I've got. Yeah. Almost done, but not done. We have discussed this before, you know, monogamous knitting versus polygamous knitting. And yeah. I mean, starting is, starting is so much fun, right? Yes. <laughs> it's the discipline that it takes to finish the projects that I sometimes feel I'm lacking. I've been finding all my old handbags, too, mm -hmm. yes. and using them to put projects in. Good. So instead of storing them in the closet. You're storing right? them here at work? No, I'm putting <laughs> projects in them. <laughs> oh, Every I see. handbag. Oh, that's you know. beautiful. Yeah, these are from summertime, right? Yes. Sort of straw ones. Yeah. And so I thought, let's pull up the old handbags. Yeah. And yeah. Put projects in them. 
why not? It's like filling your coat sleeves with yarn <laughs> as a storage spot. <laughs> oh, that's great. All right, I think we've come to the end of our time and we need to, uh, we need to let you guys go. Have a biology break and make yourself a cup of coffee or tea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we'd love to say thank you for joining us. Um, it's always a pleasure to meet you. And we, we go through all the comments. So please do leave us a comment uh, down mm -hmm. below. Um, if you haven't already, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'd love to see, um, we'd love to see our subscriptions go up. Who wouldn't, right? Mm -hmm. Give us a like if you like what we're doing. And um, yeah, give us a comment. Tell us what you'd like to see more of or less of. Let us know what you're working on. That's yeah. always fascinating too. We love to know what pattern you're working on, kind of what, what's uh, on your cue. Exactly. All right. Have a great month, everybody. We'll see you again soon.